Question 21 asks you to find the length to the nearest tenth of the line segment joining the points negative 4, 2, and 146, comma, 52. For this question, we can use the distance formula, which is the distance is going to be the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And um, we'll just call this point 1 and this point 2. So that would make this x1, y1, and this x2, y2. So we just run that through the formula. Square root of parentheses um, minus 4 minus 146 squared plus 2 minus 52. You have to be consistent if you're if you're um, well actually in this case you don't have to be consistent because it's getting squared it would work it out anyway but when you're doing slope you have to be consistent uh, I'll run this through the graphing calculator uh, so I'll do uh, minus 4 minus 146 and I'll square that plus uh, 2 minus 52 parentheses 2 minus 52 squared. I'm not going to do the whole thing on one line. Here's the squaring. Then I could take the square root by doing second square root. And then to, to get this, instead of retyping 25,000, because I might make a mistake when I type it, I push second and this negative sign. And then it has this ands, which basically means whatever the last number was. And we get our answer 158.11. 3883, which is closest to choice 4. Uh, question number 22 is, um, what is the slope of a line perpendicular to the line whose equation is y equals 3x plus 4? And you might want to take a moment to pause and do this yourself. Okay, welcome back. So for this question, uh, this is equals. Um, lines that are parallel have the same slope. Lines that are perpendicular have slopes that are uh, negative reciprocals of each other. So the slope of this original line is 3, because when it's in this form, y equals something x plus or minus something, the number in front of the x, the coefficient, will be the slope. So the line perpendicular will have negative reciprocal. Well, 3 is really like 3 over 1. So we flip it, and we negate it. We take the opposite, so it becomes a negative. That's why the answer to this question is choice 2. Moving on to question 23. In the diagram below, circle O, you have secant. So uh, AB cuts through the circle at D. Um, AOC, which is a secant, goes through. Oh, now very important, O is important, o is, o is the center there, that could be important. And uh, AE equals 4, AB equals 12, and DB equals 6. They want to know the length of OC. Let's take a look at this question. Let me get this version of it. So I'll draw the information as my picture. So AE is 4. AB, that's all the way from here to here, that's 12 and db is 6. <clears throat> and there's a whole bunch of theorems about when there are lines like this in a circle and what how big they are. Well, when you have two secants, the rule is this. The outside, you, you, you have two line segments. I like to say my rule this way. The outside piece, which is this secant line, has sort of an inner part and an outer part. The length of the outside piece multiplied by the entire secant line should be equal to any other outside piece times any other complete secant line. So if db is uh, 6 and ab is 12, that makes ad 6. So we can say the outside piece, which is 6, times the entire segment, which is 12, should equal the other outside piece, which is 4, times the other entire segment, which is AC. Now that's not what they're asking for, but that's going to help us. 6 times 12, 72, equals 4 times AC. So 
AC equals 18. Now that's just the answer for AC. That's 18. That means since AE is 4 and the whole thing is 18, that means this piece is 14. Now before you get too excited about that, they weren't asking for how big EC was. They were asking how big OC was. This is where the fact that O is the center comes in handy. OC is a radius, which is half the diameter, which is 7. So there's a lot of opportunities to make a mistake on, on that question, but that's what the answer is. Moving on, question 24. The diagram below shows a pennant, which is like a flag, in the shape of an isosceles triangle. The equal sides each measure 7, equal 13. The altitude is x plus 7, and the base is 2x. Um, was the actual length of, of the base. So for, for this question, I'm going to use the, um, the fact that if you have an isosceles triangle, and let's see, it shows the pen in equal size. This is the altitude, very important. X plus 7 is the altitude, because an altitude, by definition, is perpendicular to the base. So what we have here are two right triangles. And another thing about the altitude is that in an isosceles triangle, the altitude also is the median, meaning it bisects the base. So if this is 2x, each piece is, is x. And now we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve this. The Pythagorean theorem says that if you take the square of the two legs and add them together, it will equal the square of the hypotenuse. To, um, you probably could just check all the four answer choices, see which one works, but I'll do it the algebraic way. x plus 7 squared is x plus 7 times x plus 7. 13 squared is 169. x squared plus x squared plus 14x plus 49 equals 169. Actually, this gets difficult to do with um, unless, let's see what happens, uh, you subtract 120 from both, 169 from both sides, get minus 120. Now this 2 out here is pretty annoying, but you can divide everything through by 2. 7x minus 60 equals 0. And 60 is 5 times 12, and uh, 12 minus 5 is 7, so x plus 12 x minus 5, which means x equals negative 12. We reject that because it's the length of something, or x equals 5, which is the answer to this question. So that, that was difficult, at least relatively. Question 25. In the diagram below of triangle ABC, CD um, is the bisector of angle BCA, AE is the bisector of CAB. So we have some angle bisectors and they want to know what's true uh, in this situation. Let me go to this version of it. So what an angle bisector means is that um, wait, AE is, is, a, is the bisector of CAB. That means that this angle is equal to that angle. And CD is a, is a bisector of BCA, that means this angle equals that angle. And they want to know what has to be true. Um, does DC, oh, and, and then we have this BG drawn. So basically we have these two angle bisectors, and they came together at point G. Now I think what they're getting at in this problem is that there's a rule from geometry that if you have two angle bisectors, like here I've drawn in bisector of angle A and angle C, they intersect at a point. And if you draw the third angle bisector in, it will intersect at that point also. It will intersect the other two. And here's a little visual demonstration of that. I think that's what they're getting at in this question. If you know that fact, then you can say that these two angle, these these angles here, are also congruent, and that's um, that DB angle DBG. These are G's here. It's congruent to uh, EBG. 
So I think they're testing to see if you if you learn that property from geometry. Another pretty tricky question. Okay, moving on. In the diagram below, um, circle O, you have chords A, D, and B, C intersecting at E, and they want to know which uh, relationship must be true. Hmm, let's take a look at this. Um, one thing that happens when two chords intersect, well, we have something called an inscribed angle right here. And this angle is half equal to half of this arc over here. But more important for our purposes, this angle A also intercepts the same arc. And that makes these two angles congruent. Now arc AB here is intercepted by angle D and also by angle C. So even if you don't know the rule about the arc uh, being double the angle, two angles that intercept the same arc have to be congruent. By intercept, I mean if you draw this angle out between the two sides of the angle, you have this arc. So what I have here, and these are equal because they're similar, uh, because they're vertical angles. So what I've got here is similar triangles. Now let's look at the choices. Um, does angle C, A, E have to be congruent? Well, it has to be similar, but not necessarily congruent. Does triangle A, E, C have to be similar to B, E, D? Here's E right here, and the answer is yes. Those, that's the answer to this question. Similar triangles. Question 27 has reminds me of something from a question a few back. Um, what is the slope of this line, basically? Because when two lines are parallel, they have the same slope. So let's take a look here. If the original line is negative one half y minus six, hmm. how about a negative one half y equals six x plus ten? So the slope of this line is not six, but you have to uh, get it into y equals mx plus b form. For that, that means multiply everything through by 2, by negative 2, both sides, and you'll get y equals negative 12x minus 20. So that's the slope. So the slope of this line is 12. When it was negative 12, when two lines are parallel, they have the same slope. So this one also has to have a slope of negative 12. Question number 28. Uh, the coordinates of the vertices of parallelogram ABCD. So they give you these. The slopes of which line segments could be calculated to show that ABCD is a rectangle? Well, we're already told that the thing is a parallelogram. So what makes a parallelogram, a general one, different from a specific parallelogram, which is a rectangle, is that not only are the opposite sides parallel and congruent, but there's also uh, adjacent sides are perpendicular. So to check if this thing is really a rectangle, uh, we'd have to check, uh, well, AB and DC, we don't have to check those. We know those are the same slope. AB and BC, though, this is the answer. Because if we can, if those, if we check those slopes and they're negative reciprocals of each other, then they'll be perpendicular. And that, together with the fact that it's already a parallelogram, would make it a rectangle. Part two, the questions are still worth two points each, but you got to be real caref careful here because any mistake will you lose half credit. Uh, they they want to know the surface area of a sphere that has diameter of 12 inches. Well, you're given a formula for a surface area of a sphere. It's on your sheet. Surface area equals four pi r squared. Now be careful here. It's the diameter that's 12, not the radius. Since the diameter is 12, the radius is six formula says it's 6 pi r squared, which is 4 times pi times 6 squared, and then throw that into the calculator. Uh, 4 times pi times 6 squared, which equals... So the answer is 452.38. Looking at the answer choices, um, they, they want it to the nearest square inch. So it is, which is 452.38. Four square inches. And here's a special treat. Sarah's gonna draw for you. Purple. What is that? Draw up here. What are you making, Sarah? It's purple. Wow.
that's great.